Hi everyone, Chris Anderson from Mount Comfort RV. Well, today we're going to be looking at another Numar product. This particular one is a Bay Star. This is the 3616 floor plan. This was the winner of our video on demand. Sorry it took us a couple weeks to get back to it, but it got cold and I got lazy. Nothing works as well when it's cold, especially me. Uh, but uh, we did heat this coach up today, so we're nice and comfy inside. I'm guessing the walkthrough around the outside is going to be a little quicker than normal, but we'll show you everything you need to see. So this is a 2023 model. Again, it's a Baystar 3616. This has the Axis decor in it with the Calypso cabinets and the outside is Burma. So for those of you keeping score of the, the specifics there and you want to look at it online and see all those different colors on a brochure, that's what we're looking at here. The 3616 is a bunk uh, model, which Numar doesn't do a ton of bunk models, uh, but they do do a handful of them and they do them well. And this one's actually a bunk and a bath and a half. So uh, kind of the best of, of all worlds there on a gas chassis. Uh, this is on our Ford platform. Ford makes several different um, weight ratings on their platforms. On your cheaper coaches, you'll see 16,500 uh, gross vehicle weight rating chassis or 18,000, 20,000. This is on the heaviest duty gas platform really ever made in the RV industry. This is a 26,000 gross vehicle weight rating chassis. What that means is that is the amount of weight that the wheels, the tires, tires, the axles, uh, everything is made to carry. So you'll have plenty of cargo carrying capacity with this gas coach uh, and, and really going up and down the road. You're going to get a little better ride and drive out of it as well because you have the large Larger wheels, the larger tires, uh, the 22 and a half. So this is a very uh, a coach that drives very very well, as close to a diesel as you can get without it being a diesel. Uh, so um, with that in mind, everybody always asks me the price on these. As I've said before, um, Numar has certain rules. We do play by the rules. The I can give you the MSRP. My sale price to you will be way 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 below that but you have to call me or email me to get that. But the MSRP is 269,416 is what we're looking at there. So 269,416 for the uh, MSRP on this coach. Sale price, way below that. Call, don't forget to ask for me. Little bit of housekeeping here. Please don't forget to like our videos. That helps us a lot. That gains us in popularity. Even if you're you're just getting a little education, you're not shopping for it. When you press the like button, a lot of people don't realize that actually gains our popularity on the on the app. So we get more views out there, and and that's why we do this. This helps us sell coaches eventually. Maybe you're not looking for two or three years down the road. It doesn't hurt you at all to hit that like button. If you want to see more of our videos, also hit the subscribe button. If you like our videos, tell a friend. If you don't like our videos, don't tell anybody. All right, let's get right to it. We'll start up front. This, as I said, this is on the Ford chassis. Um, the nice part about the gas coaches as opposed to the diesels are everything is very familiar up here. I mean, if you have had any type of Ford in the last 10 years, this cockpit should look pretty familiar to you. The steering wheel, the controls on there, where the wipers are, where the shifter is, all of that will be, uh, will be to you. You can see we have the blackout shades down um, up front. The ones on the side are manual. The one in the front windshield is power, so that's just a press of a button to bring that up and down. Uh, that makes it very nice. It'll actually come part of the way down while you're driving. So if you are headed west into the sun of, uh, in the afternoon and the sun's blinding you a little because that is a obviously a huge piece of glass up front, you bring that down just a little bit. It acts like an awesome visor. I know when I first started selling RVs, many years ago um, th they had taken the automotive flip down shades and tried to tried to put those in rvs well they just weren't designed for that and, and honestly they were horrible um, this is such a much better setup not even funny so um, on all numar uh, motorhomes you have hydraulic leveling system fully automatic so basically there's a power button on the left there and then in the top right you see that auto level button when you pull into a campsite you set the parking brake uh, and and really I leave my engine running while I'm doing other things I would go outside and I would I would hook up my water and my electric and that type of thing uh, and then run your slides out and then you can level this coach just by hitting the auto level button yes I did say run your slides out first Numar does things the opposite of most companies in that regard because they're their floors, walls, and ceiling are so rigid, um, they're able to actually run the slides out first and then level the coach. So if you have questions on that and the, the whys about that and the exceptions to that rule, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We can, we can get you taken care of on all of that. You do have a nice wireless charger right here where your phone can sit. 
Um, and if your phone is capable of wireless charging, you just set it right there. Number one, you can see it. So if you want to use your phone GPS or something like that, you certainly can. Um, and it's going to be charging the whole time. We have our battery boost switch, which is like jumper cables that combines your batteries together, our generator start and stop. Overhead fans. Now, a lot of companies you'll see have fans hanging down up front here. Numar thinks they're ugly. I agree with them. The, those fans aren't really for your personal uh, comfort, if you will, although a lot of people use them that way. You, it's funny, most of the time when you see those fans are turned back towards the driver passenger. What they're for is added uh, defrost because on a uh, big piece of glass like that, your regular dash defrost you know, is going to get the bottom half, but you need some help on the top half. That's what those fans are for. So Numar is hitting those fans into the back of this cabinetry up there. You don't see them at all, but the control for them is there. And then there's a dome light switch. Of course, we have power mirrors um, and heated mirrors. You see the controls for that as well. Headlight controls and some power ports down there for plugging in your devices uh, are, are on the left turn signals here, um, of course, where they're always at, um, and wiper control, cruise control is on the wheel, as well as the menu to scroll through your different uh, options on the dash. As we get to the center, look at the size of this uh, monitor. No longer are they limiting themselves to just the whole, um, you know, what, what they would call a double den um, uh, radio spot. These newer radios come out and will give you a much bigger screen. That's your backup monitor as well. So uh, you, I, I think that's something that you really appreciate. Um, it's a nice big color monitor as opposed to, you know, when you we see some of these that are just tiny screens. Um, little cubby hole here. Um, we have our HVAC controls for the dash here. Um, this is our blind control and a visor control up front. So you can either have a full blackout in the front window or a screen that's like a day screen that you can kind of see through. Over on the passenger side, we have another phone charger over here, cup holders on both sides, uh, and uh, of course a dome light and, a, and an outlet down here. This outlet down here is a 110 volt outlet, but also has USB controls built in um, for charging your favorite devices. Of course, both of these chairs do turn around and face the um, face the living area of the coach, which is very nice. I always say that, you know, the smaller the coach is, the more you'll use that. So on a 36 footer, that's kind of a medium sized coach. You may or may not be turning these chairs around on a regular basis, but if you want to, you certainly can. Uh, we did option in the Newmark cockpit table. This is an awesome table. Look how easy that is to use. Okay, now you can face both chairs towards each other as well and have an extra little eating space here. And then when you don't want this, it's very easy to get rid of it. Just like that. So I had to go to Newmar School to learn how to do that. Um, your cup holders are built into that center console there as well. Really easy access into the engine compartment. So this has the, um, the new Ford V8 engine in it. A lot of people, I, I get the confusion, well, what happened to the V10? Uh, well, you know, the V10 kind of just lived its life. It had over a 20 year lifespan in the industry, which for an engine's lifespan is really a long time. It was a great, it was a bulletproof engine. There was really one complaint about the V10. It was noisy because it was a high revving overhead cam engine. It was a very high revving engine uh, to make its peak uh, horsepower and torque. This motor uh, is, is a little bit of a throwback engine in a lot of ways. It's actually bigger, even though V8 versus V10, V10 sounds bigger, right? It's not. The, uh, the V10 had little bitty pistons in it. The V8 has big pistons in it. So you had a 6.8 liter on the V10. This is 7.3 liter. So this is you know half of a liter bigger than the, um, and half a liter is a lot, uh, than, than the V10. And it's a push rod engine, so it's going to make its uh, horsepower, maximum horsepower and torque at a much lower RPM, which is going to make it much quieter as well. So you're going to like that. Uh, everybody's been a big fan of that, that engine so far. All right, we'll take a look at some of our storage up front. We did option in the secondary TV here. Up top here, you're going to see that we actually have what they call the Everest Wi-Fi Ranger uh, router in there. Um, in addition to being a Wi-Fi extender, you can go to AT&T or T-Mobile and get a SIM card and put in there and you can get internet through the uh, 4G network as well. So 
if internet is an important thing for you, which of course for more and more of us, uh, we, we want to be off the grid, but not completely off the grid. Well, that's, that's a great way to do that. The antennas on the inside here, that's for speaking to your devices on the inside. So that's like your router at home that sits inside. Um, all your devices talk to that, and then it's connected to the uh, main antenna on the outside, which either, like I said, is either gonna extend your Wi-Fi if there's good Wi-Fi available, or you can uh, pay a little bit of a data charge and get hooked up for uh, cellular internet. Uh, also, you see that orange cable in there. That's coming down from the satellite. This coach does have an in-motion satellite on it, so you can uh, subscribe to Dish Network, DirecTV, whichever you prefer, and um, put your satellite box right in there. And then your TVs are capable of actually getting internet, or internet, getting TV going down the road. So pretty slick. All right, up here, this is just gonna be storage, just a little cubby hole. Something I don't talk about enough, Numar spends good money on their sound systems in here. Most RV dash radios don't sound good. In fact, I've had people ask me before, does this sound good? I'm like, nah, not really. <laughs> um, not a great selling point. But Numar spends good money with River Park that does the electronics for them. They come in, they set up all the little microphones and do all the sound tests, the acoustics tests and all that to make sure that these systems are dialed in. They also use name brand. This, these are JBL speaker systems in here. The amps are specifically tuned um, and, and built-in equalizers are specifically tuned for this environment that you have right here. Uh, the radios are the the max um, output for the amp is set to ma to match the speakers, so you can literally crank it all the way up, and it's not going to distort on you. It's they're they're all tuned together for that. Uh, it'll get very loud if you want it to, uh, and sound great doing it because again, it's JBL, it's name brand stuff. Just like the TVs, we have Samsung TVs, we have Bose soundbar. So uh, you, you're going to stick with the name brands when you go through the Numar product. All right, so I think we're covered up to here. So let's start right here. Okay, this has kind of historically been a, a big control center for the Numar product right above the entry door. And I'll just go over this quickly to kind of tell you what everything does. So this is our satellite system. That's our in motion satellite. When you're ready to uh, do that, basically you flip that switch on, give it about five minutes. It's gonna dial itself into the satellites. And then like I said, you can take off and go down the road. As long as it has clear line of sight, um, it, it works pretty darn well. This is for over the air antenna. This is free TV. That's your uh, WineGuard automatic antenna. Uh, it dials itself in as well. You turn it on to, and run the program on it. It'll tell you how many channels it can, it can pick up and then your TV can do the same thing. And you'll get, if you're anywhere near a city, you'll actually get great um, over the air TV and it'll come in in high def and all that good stuff. Power control system, all right? So that's, let's call that our energy management system is a better way to say that. And, and what that's for is for keeping us from popping the circuit breaker out at the post. Not the circuit breaker inside the RV, but the one at the campsite that uh, uh, if we turn on too many things on an RV without an energy management system, we'll, we'll end up taking it over the 30 or 50 amp um, threshold and it will pop the circuit breaker. And that's always frustrating. So that actually um, systematically turns things off um, to keep you under that. So like, let's say you're running it, you're on a 50 amp service and you're running uh, 45 amps right now and somebody flips on a hairdryer that pulls 10 amps. Well, obviously that's going to put you over the 50. It's probably going to pop that circuit breaker. Well, this would turn off certain things that you won't even notice happening. For instance, like it'll turn off a compressor on one of the air conditioners. Well, that'll keep you under that 50 amp threshold. As soon as somebody turns off the hairdryer, uh, it turns that compressor back on. The most beautiful part about this system is notice there's virtually, there's just two little buttons on it. You'll virtually never touch it because it will do all of that stuff automatically and, and detect what type of service you're on and all that. So nice system there, nice convenience. Over here, this tells us what kind of water heater we have in here. This is the on-demand Truma AquaGo. So uh, with the AquaGo, it is on-demand. Now I wanna, I wanna say sometimes people differentiate between instant and on-demand. Okay, those are two different things. There are instant water heaters that we use in residential scenarios sometimes where under each sink or faucet, there's actually a little water heater in there and, and that's instantaneous hot water. You know, within three seconds of turning it on, you've got hot water coming out the faucet. That's not what this is. This is on demand. So in other words, instead of having a tank of water, six or 10 gallons, something like that, and that is your allotted amount of hot water, we actually have a system that can heat and keep up with you on demand. So it's, right now it's not heating anything. We could be out 
camping in this. It wouldn't be heating a thing right now. When we turn on the hot water faucet, that system is gonna say, hey, there's a demand for hot water, let's start heating this up. And it can keep up, it can make hot water faster than you can use it, is, is the idea there. So you're gonna get a longer shower, you're gonna get nice hot water. It is a propane-based system, nice system. These are expensive, uh, but uh, honestly, I, I think they're a pretty good system and, and I think you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, you're limited to the five minute shower and, and there's a penalty if you're not out of there in five minutes. Okay, our awning lights are here. Move down to the bottom row. This is our battery disconnect, also known as the salesman switch. Basically, when you're not using your coach and you're not plugged in, you turn this off and it shuts off everything that's connected to the house batteries. Our step switch simply tells the step whether or not to come in and out every time we open or close the door, or once we're set up in our campsite, we put it in the position it's in now, and it will stay out unless the ignition key is turned on. Our main slide out control is here for our full wall slide. This is a two slide out coach. There's a full wall slide and a bed slide, as you'll see on the outside, but this is what runs the main slide in and out. This is what runs our awning in and out. And lastly is our inverter. We have a residential refrigerator in here. So of course we need an inverter in here as well. That controls our inverter. Inverters take 12 volt DC current and turn it into 110, 120 volt AC current from our battery. So that's what that does. Now, sometimes people worry, well, how long is that gonna last going down the road? Well, going down the road, you have nothing to worry about because your engine's running. Your engine is charging your batteries. Your batteries are supplying the inverter. The inverter is supplying the refrigerator and you're not running at a deficit. That alternator can keep up. And so you can drive forever basically and not be running at a deficit and your refrigerator is gonna stay cold the whole time. So then people wanna know, well, what about when I stop and I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm not feeding that uh, alternator, the alternator is not feeding the batteries anymore. So, okay, so now you're on, the, the clock is ticking. How long do you have? Well, I can't answer that question. Probably, you know, somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, but there's so many different things that come into play there. Were the batteries at full charge when you stopped? How old are the batteries? What other things are we running? How many lights do we have on in the coach? That type of thing is always gonna play into that to determine how long you have. But certainly an overnight is no problem whatsoever. Remember most people when they're RVing and they're stopped and their engine's not running, if they're not plugged in, they're probably running the generator anyway, which makes all of that a moot point. If you're running your generator, your, your inverter's not doing anything, okay? Everything's running off the generator at that point. So, um, and, and by the way, if you're gonna have air conditioning, you're gonna be running your generator if you're not plugged in. So that's just kind of, I don't think inverters get as much use as people think they're going to, except when you're going down the road. Not too many people truly boondock very often uh, where they're not using their generator or their engine, either one. There are a few of you out there, I know it, so don't, don't light me up online, but for the most part, that's a pretty, pretty small percentage. There's a little controller here for our fantastic fans. As ceilings get taller in RVs, you know, ceilings used to be right here, so you could open up your, your fantastic fan. Now, if you're five foot two, you're never gonna reach that fan right there in the kitchen. So they put the control down here so it's automatic. You can, anybody can reach this one, so that makes it nice. As we come in the entry door here, we have access to our under sink uh, storage, which is nice when you're um, standing outside the door. You don't have to come all the way in if you're just throwing something in there real quick. Our lighting in this coach is multiplex lighting, which means instead of having individual light switches like you see here, so most of the systems are on this multiplex. What I like is when you walk into here, you can hit the top two buttons at the same time. It turns on all of your ceiling lights. Also, if you're walking out of here, you hit the bottom two buttons at the same time, it shuts off all the lights. So it's real easy to, to come in and out of the coach. And if you left something on in the back, you don't have to walk all the way back there to, to get it. All right, let's go over some kitchen here. So uh, everybody wants to see the storage. Sorry, you gotta pass in front of the camera. Huge cabinet here. This is probably where you're gonna keep plates and, and glasses and stuff like that. So lots of storage here. We have a nice double bowl undermount stainless sink with a pull out sink sprayer. These are Corian countertops. These are not off-brand. These are not fake Corian. These are not some sort of fiberglass. They're not a wrapped vinyl cabinet. These are actual Corian that is cut, polished, sanded right in Newmar's factory in Napanee, Indiana. Let's look at some of the below storage. We kind of saw it from the entry door, but let's look at it from here as well. They've got a nice spot for the shelf in there. This flips down. Your little scrubbies can go in here. All right. We have another cabinet here. I like this because there's an adjustable shelf here. So if you want taller, shorter things to put in there, you can do that. And then good storage up above the microwave. Certainly cookie sheets or something like that would fit up there. 
Speaking of microwave, this is a 30 inch Whirlpool, again, name brand, convection microwave. This is a residential unit. This isn't something that, you know, you see a lot of, when they're trying, when the RV industry is trying to save money, you see a lot of brand names you don't see anywhere else. You can't buy that at Best Buy, but this you can. It's a Whirlpool convection microwave, 30 inch residential unit. Beautiful backsplash. As we flip this Corian up, we have a three burner cooktop here. Again, it's not the old flimsy metal one. This is actually cast iron grates on there. That's a nice improvement. All right, let's look at some of our drawer storage. Put that back down, okay? So four of these. The bottom one's gonna be a little deeper. And these are obviously full extension, ball bearing drawer glides, and they're the soft close. If you get them close, they'll do the rest. Three drawers like this. Again, the bottom one's a little bigger. So good kitchen storage in this floor plan. Uh, a fair amount of working space in here. You know, the, the tricky part is I always say, you know, with bath and a half floor plans, heck, it works best on a 43, 45 foot coach. Can we do it in smaller floor plans? Can we do it at 40 feet, 37 feet, 36 feet in this instance? Absolutely you can, but there's gonna be some sacrifices. There are floor plans out there that have a little bigger kitchens in them, but you're, you're not gonna do that with a bath and a half and a bunk model all at the same time. So um, there's enough workspace here, especially since everything's under mount and you can close the cooktop, you can put your sink covers on, you'll have an adequate amount of workspace here. There are outlets built in underneath here uh, to plug in your coffee maker or that type of thing. All right, let's shift over to the booth. <laughs> this is Williamsburg Furniture. Uh, this is the Dream Dinette, so you don't have the poles sitting underneath there. You don't have the super wobbly table. You can take this, flip a little lever there. It drops this tabletop down to the uh, bottom of the cushions, and then there's this extra cushion right back here that fills in the void, okay? And that makes a nice little bed. Not really an adult going to sleep there, small adult maybe, but normal adults probably not. Um, but certainly a couple of kids could sleep there, no problem. Three, a three and a five-year-old, something like that, perfect bed for them. You do have this that does fold out into a bed. This is a tri-fold bed. This would sleep a couple of people here as well. Again, this is a Williamsburg furniture. I love the design. This is you know, a lot more detailed than you typically see in RV furniture, especially with the contrasting piping around here. Just a good looking sofa. The flooring has been upgraded in here. That comes normally with a linoleum in here. Uh, this is, uh, well, honestly, the same stuff I have in my house. This is vinyl plank flooring. I love it. If you have pets, you're gonna love it. It is really, uh, I've yet to have a pet hurt it. Uh, and I've had it for a few years now. Um, they don't, they can't scratch it, dogs running in and out. If there's an accident in the house, you just don't worry about it. Nothing seems to hurt it. So it seems there's so many high-end floors out there that aren't pet proof in one way or another. Uh, and, and that's horrible. Um, this stuff impervious to it and it's very lightweight, which makes it great for the RV industry. Uh, you know, we're always fighting weight a little bit. So I like it. All right, so now we're good back to the refrigerator. Take a look here, again, Whirlpool. This one, we do have the built-in ice maker as well. That's an option. We optioned it in. There's a built-in lock into this also, so your orange juice doesn't end up in the middle of the floor while you're going down the road. And no floor plan would be complete without a good pantry. Look at this. These are locking drawers, but they pull in. These are adjustable in height. Um, they lock in place, so unless you push in, it's not coming out. Again, that keeps your canned goods where your canned goods should be. Nice tall up top, so if you want cereal boxes there, great. If not, you have plenty of room for soup cans and that type of thing as you go down. All right, so I think we've kind of covered most of the living area. Only thing left is the TV station. Storage up above. Now, I don't think most people carry a lot of DVDs or certainly not videotapes anymore, um, which at one time cabinets like this were great for that. I kind of think this is extra pantry in my, in my mind, but I, I'll make a deal with you. If you buy it, I don't care what you put here. But nice spot there, again, adjustable shelf. Samsung television, Bose soundbar. Name brands, it's gonna look good, it's gonna sound good. These are smart TVs. And then we have the fireplace option. A lot of people really love the fireplace. This is actually 1500 BTUs of heat if you need it. Today we did, so it's on and it is throwing off the heat. Or you can, if you just want the ambiance and you don't need the heat, you can just turn on the light show. As I mentioned, this model has bunk beds. So we have two bunk beds here with windows. The windows are optional. We optioned them in on here. They each have a light in here as well. The ladder is built in, so it's not some ladder you have to stow somewhere. Uh, it sits right there and rides, rides along just fine. Now I mentioned bath and a half, so let's start with the half. Pretty roomy bathroom. Normally half baths, it's hard for me to be in and film at the same time. This one's not. There's plenty of room around the toilet. 
Okay, up top we have our circuit breakers and fuses. Very residential. Okay, and then open this. We've got our extra storage here. And a window in here that does open. Of course, another fantastic fan with wall controls. A plug-in in here. And honestly, especially for the half bath, this is good counter space in here. You know, you know in the back you're going to have the lotions and potions and, and everything, but um, you don't usually get a lot of room for that. A lot of times, you know, you'd have like this much sink space in the half bath. This is actually a decent amount of countertop space. And look at the drawers in here. Four little drawers like that. A little cabinet here. Another little cabinet here. Another lower drawer. I mean, they're... There's a lot of storage in here and it's not cramped. So for a half bath, this is about as good as it gets. Oh, and medicine cabinet, duh. Don't forget to show that. And being that it's kind of on angle, this has good depth to it. All right, moving on. We walk back here, we have a walk around queen size bed in the uh, bedroom. Noah King is not optional. Again, it doesn't all fit in 36 feet. I mean, we would love to throw everything in there, um, but we, we are limited by uh, space. And Newmar's 36 footer is actually a 36 footer. Uh, so uh, when I say that, there, there's a lot of companies out there, they'll, they'll call a model a 29. And then you look at the brochure and you look at the actual length, it's 34 and a half feet long. Okay, with Newmar, the first two digits of Newmar's model number will indicate its approximate length and it will be within that footage. So this is called a 3616 floor plan. I didn't look it up ahead of time. It's 36 something. Usually it's like 36 foot 10 inches. I assure you it's not 37 or 38. Okay, it's 36 feet and change uh, is what their floor plan measures. So it's an actual 36 foot coach, not a named 36 foot coach. On either side of the uh, bed, we have a little bit of storage there. I'm not gonna open those up right now because I'll trip over the camera, but um, you have an outlet on both sides of the bed as well, and they have USBs built in. We have great reading lights on both sides here, and the controls for that are right above your head when you're laying in bed, they're very easy to see. One thing I like here, it's a little hard to see because we have the blinds down, is both of these windows open. So if it is a nice night and you want some cross breeze, uh, perfect floor plan for that. There's also, this is prepped for a CPAP machine. You can't see it, so take my word for it. This is one big, nice cabinet here. The other half looks just like this half. And then there is um, a, pl a plug-in in here. So if you want to plug in a CPAP machine, you can certainly do that. So they've kind of, they've tried to think of everything. As far as wardrobe storage goes in this coach, we have a nice ward here, okay. And then we have five drawers down below. Two like this. And three like this, a little bigger. This one is not a door. This is, again, that's a spot for a satellite receiver, or if you want to put a Blu-ray player in there, something like that. We'll just call it an AV corner, again, another Samsung TV. And then our controls for our bedroom slide are right here for the bed slide. Moving right along back into the master bath, we have a pocket door here. Um, I missed it, but there's also a pocket door at the entry to the bedroom as well. So you can close off the bedroom uh, from the, uh, from the rest of the coach also. But walking back in here, again, good space. Look at the size of this shower. For a 36 foot bunk model bath and a half coach, good size shower, good height. I'm 5'9", plenty of room up here. Anybody less than 6'5 is not gonna have any problem. If you're over 6'5", well, they just don't build RVs for you anyway, sorry. Um, but yeah, a lot of space back here. Good room around the toilet. Look at that, I'd call that a linen closet, but again, you buy it, you can put whatever you want there. Look at the size of this medicine cabinet. Super wide, room on either side of the vessel sink for lotions and potions. A plug in here for your hair dryer curling iron. Look at the drawers in here, eight of them. Eight drawers in this coach, like that, and then storage under the center as well. Room around the toilet, it's adequate, is it? Tremendously spacious, no, but okay, there's room. That's as far as I'm taking that, as far down that road as we're going. So that's a little bit about this floor plan on the inside. Um, obviously it's all LED lighting, it's vinyl touch ceiling. And when you stand back and look at this, uh, you don't see your air conditioners, like there's an air conditioner right about here. You don't see it, and that's because of the way Newmar does their ductwork. Their ceilings are thicker, so the air conditioner doesn't protrude into the living space. Well, what does that do for you? Well, 
makes it quieter, number one. Numar air conditioners are by far quieter than anybody else's, and they're using the same brand air conditioners other companies are using, but they don't protrude all the way in. It's like the difference between central air conditioning and a window air conditioner. Now, a window air conditioner does a pretty good job of cooling, but they're noisy because it's sticking into the house. Central air is better because the main unit sits outside and only the fan is blowing into the house. Well, that's kind of how they've done this. So with Numar ductwork, you're gonna see that for every output duct, there's a return duct as well. And they do that to, like I said, not only make it quieter, but it's also more efficient that way. Most of these manufacturers use one return duct per air conditioner, and that's just not the most efficient way of doing it. It's not the way houses are done today. It's the way houses were done 60 years ago, but it's not the way houses were done today. And there's a reason for that. So this is gonna be a little more even heating and cooling throughout the coach. It's gonna be quieter. And they put these ducts in the middle of the coach, right down the middle of the coach, because what they discovered is they, they used to have them spread out, but with all the different slide outs, when you bring your slides in, now going down the road, those air conditioner ducts are blowing or sucking from up on top of the, the slide out, which isn't the most efficient way. So these are efficient whether the slides are in or the slides are out, and that's a beautiful thing. All right, I'm gonna trade Troy spots and I'm gonna let him shut this door. We're gonna let him get a, a view of the floor plan from the back to the front. We don't usually get that angle, but he's standing back there in the bedroom and you can kind of see how much space you have here. With this full wall slide, it's really a wide open floor plan. Even though we've put a lot of stuff in here, bunk beds, bath and a half, booth, sofa, it's actually a very roomy floor plan. Now, what people really want to see is what's it look like with the slide rooms in. We're going to show you that now. All right, so the slides are in. I'm sitting on the bed. There's plenty of room, even though the bed is in. You still get the full 60 by 80 queen. By the way, this is, this is a true 60 by 80 queen. This is not a um, RV queen. A lot of RV queens are like 74, 75 inches long. That's not the case here. This is an 80 inch long queen. So just like a regular uh, regular queen bed, you can stretch out on here. It's uh, it's not one that sometimes the beds have to fold in half or something like that to, to close the slides. That's not the case here. If somebody was driving and somebody else wanted to come back here and take a nap, it's wide open. Can we get to the half bath? You bet. Wide open, easy easy in for the half bath. Can we get to the bunk beds? Absolutely. So if you're traveling with kids and uh, they want to lay down and play on their tablet, easy. And probably about as wide open to the refrigerator as you're ever going to see. I mean, oh, we're locked. No, we're not. Oh, ha, ha, ha. That'll go on the blooper reel. If I hadn't had it opened earlier, there would be an excuse, but there's no excuse now. So, um, here we go. So really wide open into the refrigerator. I mean, you can do a full extension open on the fridge and that's most floor plans. You can't do that. So this is honestly about as good as it gets for space in an RV with the slide rooms in. I mean, look at this aisle, super wide all the way back. Um, easy into the bathroom, easy into the fridge. Those are the things we care about. And honestly, if somebody wanted to sit here and watch the in motion satellite dish, I've seen a lot worse viewing angles than this sitting in front of the fireplace, so uh, that works as well. New for 2023 is the touch screen. Now, Numar's been a little behind on this, I think, historically. Um, they're just never the first ones to get the, the new electronic whiz bang out there. They'll let other companies work the bugs out and then they'll jump in with the touch screen. But obviously everybody knows touch screens are the way we're going. We're going this way in our house. We're going this way. Tablets control everything. Uh, and, and Numar wanted to be sure they picked the right one. Well, the, the business partner they picked in this is somebody they're very familiar with. It's KIB. And KIB is who d does their multiplex lighting in uh, the entire product line. So when KIB said they could make one of these, Numar knew, knew they had the right partner there. So when you're looking at this, it's, it's the same panel throughout the entire lineup all the way up through Dutch Star. And it'll look exactly like this, except the, the higher up the line you go, the more choices you might have down here at the bottom. But how easy can this be to work? I mean, home, AGS, which is auto generator start, which this does have, HVAC, so there's our heating and cooling control, and lighting. You can't get much easier than that. Yes, there is an app for this as well, so you can download it to your app to control this, download it to your phone to control this, but the home button has most of the things you're ever going to need. It tells us our tank levels. It tells us our battery levels. We can turn our water pump off and on. This coach does have the heated holding tank, so this is go a good 
four season coach and you can turn the heated holding tanks on and off from here and then our basic lighting for living room bedroom bathroom and master are here as well now if we want to program our auto generator start to where we can start and stop our generator if the batteries get low or if the temperature hits a certain uh, uh, threshold we can program that here and it's a lot easier to program here than it has been historically through the um, other pad that we had um, and then HVAC, we want to turn on our heat pumps, which this coach does have dual heat pumps, by the way. So we can heat this coach three ways. The furnace, which we're using today, if it's above 40 degrees, we can use uh, our heat pumps. Both ACs have heat pumps on them. Or um, as a nice supplemental, uh, the fireplace, which we already talked about. But the heat pumps and the furnace and the air conditioner are all controlled through here, living room and bedroom. Uh, so that is a nice, easy to read touch panel. And then our main lighting where we can get into um, individual rooms, individual lights, that type of thing as, as we scroll through here. You can see all the different lights you can control right from this one touch panel or better than that, from your phone. Your phone looks exactly like this. I had this downloaded to my phone. Um, it syncs up with this and it's the exact same panel. So you learn how to use this and then when you bring the app up, it's like, yeah, it's the same thing. It's super easy to use. All right, so it's cold outside. So we're going to do a walkthrough on the outside. I'm going to show you the goodies. We're not going to spend a lot of time. We're going to kind of hit the highlights and move on. In the, in the more, on the warm days, I'll uh, go a little more in depth. But let's go do that now. Okay. Sorry, folks. I'm bald. I got to wear the hat. All right. So as we look, we get a beautiful view of the front windshield. Beefy wiper blades up front. They beefed those up a few years ago. Great looking front end. Of course, it's a one piece windshield and this is bonded. This is something that don't take for granted because not all manufacturers do this. When I say a bonded windshield, it's put in like a car windshield. It's, it's basically glued to a steel frame that's, that's molded inside that cap. There are still companies out there that use a floating windshield and that means only the gasket holds it in and that means you're going to get more wind noise and potentially, if you get your coach in a twist with the leveling jacks, you can actually have a corner of a windshield pop out. I know it sounds bad, it is if it happens to you. That won't happen here, it's all bonded in. We optioned in the flagpole holder. This comes with a little stainless steel insert, it goes right here. You hang your favorite flag right here from the coach. I mentioned earlier we have 22 and a half inch wheels. They're also on uh, Alcoa aluminum rims. Aluminum rims not only look better, nice and shiny, but they also dissipate heat better than steel rims. Heat is your enemy on tires, uh, so easy, to, easy going there. One of the things people do care about as we get older, our knees and hips sometimes don't work as well. A nice low entry step. Look where this is sitting. That's less than six inches off the ground. So that's easy entrance into the coach. As we come back into our storage, everything has this automotive bulb seal on it. It's not some adhesive based seal. This is actually sprung. There's a spring built into, built into this that clamps onto the framing of this. It's not going anywhere. You see our storage compartment. This is one big storage compartment. So if you have larger items, you can kind of angle them into there. And we have our Xantrex inverter uh, sitting right there. Easy access to that. Although you really probably never need to touch it. We come back a compartment. We're getting into heated compartments now. This is our fresh water tank. Look how easy it is to get to the, the water drain. It's sitting right there. So many times manufacturers put those in really bad places to get to. Not the case here. It comes time to drain your fresh water, flip that valve. Before I skip it, Samsung TV on a swivel arm outside with a Bluetooth stereo out here. You've got a plug-in out here as well. So if you want to charge your favorite items, you can do it there. There's another plug-in back here. Again, good storage. These are all lighted compartments. Look at the way the Numar flush fit slides go in here. No other gas motorhome manufacturer does this and only one other diesel manufacturer does this to where the slides recess back into the sidewalls. So beautiful setup there. We'll come back here, more storage. 5500 Onan, it's been running the whole time. I'm standing right next to it. I'm sure you can hear it, but it's not loud. I can easily talk over it. Bigger storage compartment here, and this is pass-through. All right, come on back. One piece molded fiberglass cap instead of just that cheap flat back. Um, this is a lot less likely to leak in a scenario like this. Your camera's molded in, not some bolted on item that looks like an afterthought. We do have the ladder on here as well for easy roof access. So this is our dump for our rear holding tank. Obviously this is a 50 amp shore power cord with a surge protector, but this is our dump for our rear uh, black tank. You have two black tanks on this because we do have two toilets on this. So um, this is our, uh, our back one. Again, the knife valve is up here in the conditioned space. It's not exposed to the elements. More storage here. 
fuel fill. Here are the sticks, regular unleaded, no reason to put premium in it. And then down here, that's our sewer hose storage. That compartment, that's all that it, you want in there. It gets its own little spot. More storage here, so there's a lot of storage compartments on this as we go through. We'll come forward and get into the actual, um, the wet bay, if you will. This is hot and cold water. We can turn on and off our water pump. We have a black tank uh, rinse for both sewer tanks and our fresh water connection. Here's our whole house water filtration system. So that goes right in here. So every drop of water that comes through this coach gets filtered. And then we have our dump valves for our front black tank and our primary gray tank is right here. When it comes time to winterize, they gave you the hose right here. It goes down in a bottle. You turn two valves. It sucks the fluid right out. More storage. Here's something you rarely, if ever, see on gas coaches, actually a pull-out battery tray. We have four batteries on this tray, and, and that helps because we do have an inverter in this coach, as I mentioned, um, so you need more battery power with that. But most of the time, they just stick batteries in a compartment, and good luck changing them, good luck checking the fluid on them. Um, they don't give you the pull-out tray like a diesel coach has. This gives you that. There's our propane bottle. So that's going to run our water heater, our furnace, items like that. All right, we'll walk back around and get a view of the front of this coach again. And then I'm going to close it all up and I'm going to let Troy get some shots of the paint because it is absolutely a great paint job. Sorry it's a quick one on the outside. I'm cold. I don't do well when it's cold, but let's shut these compartments up and let him get a good view. All right, guys, that's everything. Thanks for watching. Remember, we do these videos. We don't put a bunch of commercials in them. You don't get interrupted. That's always frustrating to me when I'm watching something on YouTube. We do these to help us uh, sell products and to educate our, our, uh, our, our, our viewers. So if, you've liked, if you do appreciate that, please hit the like button. If you have any interest in this coach at all, don't forget the number one thing. Ask for me. This is why we do these videos. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. See you next time.